Welcome to Lazarski Talks. Good evening, everybody. It's Monday, it's 6 p.m., and it means that it's time to have some talks with us on Lazarski Talks. Welcome, everybody, and I am sure that today we're going to have one of the most interesting and one of the funniest episodes because today we're interviewing a very funny guy, our friend, and a wonderful, wonderful person who's going to tell us a lot. We'll, we'll discuss a lot of interesting topics together. So let us start with the um, technical stuff, with the things that I say at the beginning every single time. So first of all, we all are Corona free. That is why we can hick, hick, kiss and hug each other. <laughs> Deep I'm not going to kiss and hug you today. But anyways, I can do that. Second thing, guys, please turn off the microphones. If you want to ask something, just text us. What else should I do? Uh, also, we are coming back with our great initiative mini contest for the best question from you, dear students. So please stay active, prepare your cool questions. I'm sure you have a lot of them because we are discussing pretty interesting things today. Uh, and I want to I want to say thank you to the team of Lazarski Talks today, to our guests and to my wonderful co-host. I am sure that we're going to have a nice talk today. We're not nervous at all because we're having just, you know, a friendly gathering here. But the topic that we're going to discuss today might be, well, one of those, uh, might be a little bit hard for a lot of people, a little bit scary. But we're sure that today you will get to know a lot of important and interesting information. So, Dipanshu, let's, let's dive into this. Yes. Straight away. Oh, right. Stock market. We actually didn't we, did, yeah, we, we actually think, didn't we I didn't say his name. Yeah. Dipanshu Lakwan, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, please welcome uh, our beautiful friend, uh, handsome, I'm sorry. <laughs> handsome friend. Uh, okay. and we are diving into the topic of stock market. Exactly. Uh, but before diving into stock market, I would like to <laughs> say a few things that i'm really honored to be here first of all these are not just my friends these are my classmates my co-workers you name it we have like all kind of relations going on here and second thing i would just give you my brief introduction if some of you don't know me i am the panchulakwan i am from india and uh, this is just the basic stuff but i am an ex-student of lazarski university i studied international business economics and i'm really happy to be part of this family as a teacher now so let's get started. You forgot to say that you're a model of Lazarus University as well, and the face Thank that you. a lot of people <laughs> can see uh, yeah, on the pictures. Yeah, if you know, you know. Okay. So, stock market. Coming back to the things that we were studying together a couple of years ago, right. something that I'm not interested in, and something that Dipanshu is very interested in. So, please make me and Darina dive into this wonderful topic today and make us love it together with all our viewers. Exactly. So when we say a market, I will give it to you in a very basic term. When we say a market is a place where you buy and sell things. Stock market is a place where you buy and sell stocks. Stock is a part of a company so that if you buy it, you become the partial owner of it. For example, let's take Apple, right? It's $10 right now, but $10 would be too less for Apple because Tim, uh, Tim Cook deserves it. So let's make it 100, right? So if you buy one or two shares of this company, you become the partial owner. Now, if you want to buy a stock, there should be somebody who is selling it. This marketplace where these transactions are taking place, it is called the stock market. Now, there is a very broad variety of things which happens here. Uh, there are a lot of instruments. There are, there are stocks, uh, options, deliverables. Uh, like deliverables consist of options uh, because these are basically derived from I think I'm really going too much technical about it, but I will just put it into simple terms. If you want to buy stock, you have to go to the stock market. And there are two types of things happen here. Trading. In trading, there are three parts. Short term investing, which is called day trading. Second part is uh, medium, which is called swing trading, where you hold the stock for one or two days. And the third part will be long term investing. There are two types of traders there retail traders institutional traders so as we all we are sitting here we are clearly not institutional traders we have small amount of money with us all we want to do in stock market is not to know the technicals we just want to make some money so on my personal experience if you want to make some money in stock market please do not day trade invest your money in a long-term asset like a lot of index funds but we will just cover it up slowly as we go through the questions Right. Okay. okay. So that was so, a brief introduction. I am already overwhelmed. <laughs> and this is another day when I'm saying to myself that I'm very happy that I had you, Dipancho, on my educational path. Uh, because you have the skill to 
explain very hard things in a very brief words and i'm very thankful for that <laughs> okay. uh, since uh, some time ago so uh, let us move to the second question because we we're gonna have different topics today the first one will be related to the things that we cover now then we're gonna talk about some other stuff but the next question that we have today is investing and of course cryptocurrency no so word. how can i invest and hit the point okay guys so when it comes to investing and cryptocurrency so you cryptocurrency you can invest in cryptocurrency but it is sometimes way too risky to just put your money into that now when we say cryptocurrency these days you see there is a lot of hype about bitcoin this coin that coin like cardano and this so i will just start with a short story like where it all started because it's important to dive down in the basics of any stuff if you want to just you know start investing in it so in 1980s there was a group of people they were called cypherpunks so what they did is they made a program where you can encrypt and send the message from one person to another person peer to peer anonymously and then what happened uh, they didn't trust government they thought that government is centralized and they are controlling masses so we are going to develop a program where you can send a message to a person without anybody else knowing and they continued this journey but when in 2007 the financial market was crashed the layman brothers were dissolved and uh, as such a big institution was it dissolved so they thought like what can be done so there was a guy maybe there was a guy or a group of people they were called satoshi nakamoto he wrote a nine page paper under his name and there he explained how the bitcoin works so bitcoin is basically just a peer to peer electronic cash system which is decentralized and what i mean by de decentralized is whatever transactions you are making in the bank today because if i want to send uh, my father money in my country or he sends me most of the time so he, the bank has to put the transaction in the name okay the pancho's father the pancho anastasia darina this so they are recording it and the same thing in the bitcoin the computer does it so all the nodes on the bitcoin network they check every transactions and you cannot hack or an, uh, hack this because there are certain ledgers if, if it's getting too technical just just stay with me i will just get to the point there are technical ledgers so if you try to hack this ledger it means it disqualifies every ledger behind that so it is unhackable this is how it works so when we talk about cryptocurrency it has it had a rise and it has a fall so in 2009 the price of one bitcoin was like 15 20 cents nobody was really paying attention because because why to pay attention in 2010 however the bitcoin raised to one dollar and then there was a guy who sold three pizzas for 10,000 Bitcoin and then it came became mainstream because when people saw that okay I can literally buy some things with my Bitcoins so people started gaining traction towards it so in 2012 13 Bitcoin started going up 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 but again there were a lot of controversies because these big banks they don't really want you to you know transact anonymously because what will their work be right so in 2015 the bitcoin reached a high then it fell down in 2017 it we, it went to 20000 but again there is a speculation as a conspiracy theory could be that uh, some there was a very big seller who pushed the price from 20000 to down and there was this downfall and right after 3 years here we are bitcoin is on 60000 but today is at 44000 so my advice if you want to invest in cryptocurrency do your research it goes for every type of advice do your research find out what kind of cryptocurrency have an intrinsic value on them because uh, we will talk about Elon Musk because he's a very hot topic these days Elon Musk there was a coin called Dogecoin and uh, this coin doesn't hold any value towards it it's just a meme coin somebody made it and Elon Musk as we see the most powerful guy richest person on earth what he did tweeted okay to the moon to the moon to the moon Dibash, we're gonna have a separate question for that okay 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 so he hyped this cryptocurrency but it it might fall down pretty soon so don't invest in these kind of coins invest in something which has value that is the border point okay yeah okay so what is the next question we're gonna talk about is mm -hmm. it the right one okay i'm just double checking okay. um very interesting question for me as well for everyone who is watching us uh how can i earn on trading okay if you want to earn anything there is a very simple one word formula buy low sell high or sell high buy low that's a different concept that's called short selling but if you want to uh, th there are three factors that you have to remember if you want to invest uh, earn money in stock market 
you have to buy low. It means the stock must be in an uptrend. When you look at the graph of the stock, it must be going up. Second, you do not buy when it's up here because this is called FOMO, fear of missing out. Because there are stages in the market where people are in euphoria, people are in fear. But when the price of the stock is going up, everybody is like, I want to get on the train. You know, I just want to jump and make some money. But it doesn't happen because that's the worst time to buy. I made this mistake personally many times. Fear of missing out. And then when the prices go down, I'm like, uh, should I buy it or maybe it will go down? But don't speculate. Trading and gambling, they can be very close relatives if you just don't have enough information to just buy the stuff. So my advice, Darina, as you asked me this question, trading, short-term trading, you cannot compete with the institutional traders because they have way better softwares than us. Uh, for example, I will give you an example. I bought crude oil at $66 price and there was a news flash that uh, some rig went down and the prices started falling down from them when the news came it was five minutes late but the people who uh, like they called the institutional investor uh, on the Wall Street and they just sold it right there so these people are connected with the elect uh, this optical fiber networks where the information is so fast that even one millisecond on the Wall Street makes you more money than we will ever retail investors make so invest your money in um, he, uh, or index funds index fund there's a Vanguard index fund index fund basically means it's a group of companies total 500 companies you can buy a certain part of the company so top 500 companies will be there invest your money in there and that is gonna be a really good investment which will give you six to ten percent return on your uh, average portfolio because get rich quick it never works if it's too good if it sounds too good to be true it means it, it's too good to be true so you are in a long-term game don't try to make quick cash you can get lucky but not all the time okay thank you we're moving to the next question by the way we have already two questions uh, on the Instagram but I want to ask mine and then we're gonna go uh, to them all right so um, I actually want to make three questions into one so I'm gonna start at with the first one so for those who do not understand anything in crypto you know currency and in like nothing uh, so can I buy the cryptocurrency and go to the grocery store and just to use it like my regular money okay presently you cannot do it but there is this strategy that Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer elect cashless uh, electronic system in the future maybe five to ten years from now you can directly transact with Bitcoin but right now uh, there is a black economy I think we studied it in the okay. black economy ba basically means that where the transactions are not recorded on the GDP for example uh, drug market and all these in these websites the Bitcoin is used mm -hmm. so yes you cannot use it in the grocery stores right now but you can use it at the other places and uh, if you want if you buy a Bitcoin suppose today's 44,000 Anastasia Menshikova bought one Bitcoin with all her life savings tomorrow the price went to 60,000 so she basically made $16,000 on it you can cash out and then use those sixty sixteen thousand dollars to make uh, okay. transactions in the grocery store yeah. okay I got it now okay. uh, so the question that I have cryptocurrency in general do you think it's worth it do, don't you think that it's just not a real virtual money and that it's just, you know, a playing game with, with these people and then one day you're just going to wake up and this cryptocurrency will just fade out and we'll never know about this again. Right. Um, cryptocurrency, if it was a hoax, then it would, this, uh, you know, the Bitcoin's net worth is more than five countries combined in Europe. Mm -hmm. It is more than... Uh, Two trillion dollars right now so if something is that big it does it clearly gives us a sign like we can never be sure if it's real or if it's like you have uh, arguments to defend uh, arguments to put it up against anything mm -hmm. but if something is that big if people are putting their trust if there is a strong algorithm behind it bit, because Bitcoin when it crashed in 2017 it was still in thousands it was 3,300 when it reached the lowest. So $3,000 is 12,000 slotties. It's not a small amount. So I don't think it is a hoax. And I think it has a very vast future ahead of it because anonymous, it, like if you are anonymous, it is the biggest superpower against any government. I can get arrested for this, but... <laughs> <laughs> 
don't go against the government maybe just use bitcoins but be careful wh- what you're going to do your research yeah okay how about asking uh, before we have the police coming to take the punch <laughs> <laughs> we still have <laughs> we still have two questions right now minutes for this, this so, so yeah. wh- how about uh, getting to the instagram questions would you read that uh, from the very first one mm-hmm. okay we have a, quas- a question from bikir uh, who is usually moderating our yes yeah. hi to lives. you we actually miss hi you hi to you we miss you uh, please come back as <laughs> soon as you can <laughs> and he's asking uh, what is your opinion on dodge on dodge dodge oh, dodge coin yeah Okay, as I mentioned that Dogecoin doesn't have any uh, intrinsic value in itself. It doesn't solve any problem. For example, there is a c- uh, coin called IOTA. What it does, it, it connects y- uh, your things to the internet. For example, uh, if you are going to your home, you can just message your fridge to shut down for because it's too cold. You can just uh, put your uh, AC to like turn on when you are in the car or something. But just like that, the Dogecoin, it started as a meme. You know this this yellow dog, yeah. and uh, it was a meme. And Elon Musk hyped it up because Elon Musk is a genius. We all know that. He hyped it up because he s- it started as a joke, but he put a lot of money in that. He raised the he raised the price of the Dogecoin to I think it's seventy uh, cents or something. It started from zero point zero 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 two, and now it's seventy cents. So with this money, Elon Musk is has made a rocket. It will put a sticker of Dogecoin on it, but the future is uncertain. But if I would be you back here, I wouldn't invest in Dogecoin because first of all, it's too late. It is the train has already left. If you buy now, there is only the way down. So when your head is in the cloud, there is only the way down. So that's uh, I would be careful about that one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're gonna switch to the next question from the Instagram, and it is as follows: As follows, what do you say about the decentralization with crypto? Decentralization with crypto. Uh, to understand decentralization, we have to understand what is centralization first. Centralization is it means one authority which controls either the transactions or the things that you are doing. For example, let's take banking. As I mentioned, that banking controls your transaction. Banking, you trust the banks with the money. Now, in 1971, what happened? That U.S. abolished the gold system. It means the dollars they have. They don't have to be backed by the gold they hold. So, along with the U.S., many countries abolished it as well. So now the people only can trust in the banks, and the banks have freedom to print as much money as they want on their own terms. And that's the USA. What USA is doing right now? They have like twenty trillion dollars debt on them. And who do they owe to? To other countries. So this is centralized. So to avoid this monopoly, decentralization comes where nobody of a particular authority is controlling it. Just the computer algorithm and computer algorithm doesn't have feelings it doesn't care what are your biases what are the heuristics around it it just it is just is so if something goes inside that even the first transaction of bitcoin is recorded in this uh, blockchain and satoshi nakamoto was uh, awarded 50 bitcoins for the first one overall in this world there can be only 21 million bitcoins and out of them 19 million have already been mined Now there are two million bitcoins remaining. To mine these, the prices of bitcoin has to go up because of the inflation. Because mining these last two million bitcoins requires a lot of energy. Now the uh, two days ago, I posted a story on my Instagram saying that Elon Musk was saying that you know to mine a bitcoin you need a lot of uh, you know electricity. Tell me, Elon Musk, how much electricity do you need to make a Tesla car? A lot. definitely so his argument to push the price down on bitcoin might not make sense but he is a businessman so we cannot really blame him i know that i'm s- switching from topic to topic but these all are interrelated so together with the promotion of your instagram of course <laughs> follow the <laughs> punch lakman on the instagram yeah, yeah, just the please comments. go and follow me yeah so so that that's it okay yeah. okay we have another question from simon Hi from Lazarski shop and we have a question from him would you read that Yeah sure uh, first of all he's saying hi to you Hi Simon uh, how does it look with the machines that you can buy bitcoin in they're located sometimes in polish shopping centers is it really legit stuff do you really can buy bitcoins there Mhm okay so this is a very ambiguous question right here see you can buy bitcoins with the help of a broker you have to create an account on binance or coinbase but when these complex algorithms solves uh, like record a transaction the person who is mining or the computer who is mining is awarded a reward in the bitcoins itself so 
sometimes people say that okay I can mine the Bitcoin from my phone it is not possible because your phone has really less processing power there are rigs really big rigs with like heavy graphic cards and too much processing power they are making they are uh, processing this um, let's say transactions so if you see a machine where in the grocery where which shopping, shopping center shopping center where you, uh, i don't think that would be a legit thing to do please don't do that <laughs> yeah you okay. can simon please don't yeah. simon please don't do that and we're going to another question and i'm feeling like we have a family gathering or something here because we have a question from anand okay uh first of all thank you very much for watching us those who don't know anand is a founder of easy music band and my godfather of music so hi i really miss you I am waiting, we all are waiting for you to come yeah. back to Warsaw. That's true. And he has a question. Do you think the world economics will switch towards standardization of crypto when companies will be able to buy goods officially? A uh, very good question, Anand. Uh, I would like to start that. I would like to point out that why the price of Bitcoin in 2021 went up. Because it all starts from there. Because the big institutional banks like Goldman Sachs, uh, JP Morgan, they started to transact in Bitcoin, like they started using Bitcoin. And this is the reason where earlier only the retail investors were pushing the prices higher. But as soon as these in, uh, investment banks and these like institutional traders came in, a lot of money is flowing in the Bitcoin. So according to my speculation, I'm not a financial advisor, first of all, but according to my speculation, there will be a lot of resistance through China. We can face it. That's why the Bitcoin price was going down. But despite this resistance, this is something which they cannot hold it for too long. So what I think in, in next, it will not take five years, but next two, three years, the prices of Bitcoin might hit 100,000 even this year, but we will see because it go, all goes in cycle. So I think it is the future. And if it's not, then we will see. We will use <laughs> cash, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. How about the next question? Next question from student named Mert. What about XRP? When will it go? Moon. okay <laughs> these are i'm feeling like you know these are these tell me about this coin should i make the money xrp xrp i think today's xrp price is 1.3 something uh, uh just just for a second what on planet earth is xrp xrp is a type of coin just Thank like you. bitcoin bitcoin is the father of them all and in 2009 bitcoin was made in 2013 okay. when the bitcoin reached one dollar there was this kids were born so xrp is one of those coin which was uh, this is these are called alt coins mm -hmm. so w what is his name Mert. 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 uh i would really like to answer you this question but i do not know where will the prices go but most definitely they will follow the bitcoin path so as long as the bitcoin is going down just stay away from it and as soon as you see that okay there is some green green there the, all the prices are green then probably you can put some money but again do your research yeah thank you uh, we have a question, another one, mm, and it is follow, as follows. My question is not related with crypto stock market, but I think that it's important. What is the point of working out and having big muscles in the present world when you're protected by police? I have no idea what I've just Whoa, read. okay, okay. So, oh, that's a good question, actually. What is the uh, point by of... By the way, it has the second part. I think you can read it out yeah. loud right now because... I think the, qu the okay, answer okay. will be different. <laughs> uh, isn't it better to spend time on working hard and making some more money? Because now money is something that strength was years ago. Mm -hmm. Boom. Very good question. Okay. Um, I would like to start. The reason why I work out, I started for fun. I wanted to look good. Very easy answer. But later on as I went into it i treat working out as my sport if you play volleyball if you play ta table tennis good good for you but this thing is my sport and i do it because of an um, like there are many reasons backing it up first one is evolution and perspective we as a human being we are not meant to sit down in a chair although it might be very normal for people to sit down in office and make money all day but we are meant to run we were hunter and gatherers thousands of years ago and if you uh I'm not particularly targeting <laughs> the the guy who asked this question. Or the girl, or we actually girl, don't, we know. don't know. Okay, okay. So the the point of working out and you are protected by police that if you are walking down in a street at 12 p.m. and somebody attacks you, the first thing you will do is uh, not to take out your phone and just call the police, or you can just run, or you can punch him. Self-defense 
one part it keeps you mentally active it makes you look good it makes the, you look good again yeah, it makes you look good <laughs> once again <laughs> makes you face up the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know it's it's really good for you to work out i think you should work out as well with me <laughs> okay. even if it's a guy or a girl Could we, be. we don't know yeah okay uh we go to the second to the next question i think you answered this already but maybe this person mm -hmm. missed it do you think investing in dogecoin is a good idea right now just uh, revise it again yeah i'm just gonna say it one more time that uh clearly it's not a good idea because you will never know you when you will lose your money so please don't put your money in dogecoin because it doesn't hold any intrinsic value inside it it doesn't solve any problem and if something doesn't solve any problem so fundamentally it's not a good investment I see a lot of people who are interested in cryptocurrency. Yeah, I see Thank that as you. well. Yeah, and that is a nice thing because we have another question, which is from Vlad. Uh, what do you think? Is there a correlation in the market now, or is it a market collapse? Uh, can you repeat this question? Is there a correlation in the market now, or is it a market collapse? Uh, because to have a correlation between uh, something, there have to be two things so is there a yeah. correlation in the market so as far as i understand market is gonna collapse because since 2009 we are in the longest bull run we have ever faced in the economy so we do not know the market can crash uh, this year next year this month maybe today evening not today evening but markets are closed but the fact is there could be one small reason which people are not really understanding could be a uh, student loan crisis because student loan is just like it's too much and USA has a too much debt so th the next would be the recession crisis but this was a good question but what can you do about it there is a recession it will come but there is an interesting fact that I will tell you about it in 2008 when the market collapsed in 2009 the stock market prices went 60% up how did this happen where the money like how could the prices go up within the next year because the smart money which are called the institution money like Warren Buffett he's made a fortune for himself he put a lot of money in the stock market at that time because the prices were very low he has a very nice quote uh, be fearful when people are greedy and be greedy when there is blood on the streets so when you see the prices are really less it's a good time to buy and buy in cash don't buy on margin and I will explain my margin in one second margin is when you leverage something when you put some money and the broker will give you some advantage but it's a very risky thing so just buy in cash yeah. I just have a comment I am literally at this particular second missing our student times when we <laughs> used to talk about this kind of thing yeah. every single day and I just you know got a got a thought that I want to tell you guys we have a wonderful program of economics at Lazarski yeah. University <laughs> this is just one thing that I wanted to say because this is something that we do there yeah exactly. uh, so this is a perfect example of the graduate of, of master but who cares or bachelor <laughs> of economics uh yeah i just wanted to say that you were such a great classmate Thank you, so much. I just you were too i will i will just tell you uh, a thing about me and anastasia we were classmates from the beginning itself and uh, we did our projects like together she wrote uh, the theoretical part and i wrote the practical stuff so it was it was pretty great and turns out we are sitting here <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's pretty great and we didn't even miss the deadline no, we, <laughs> we, we never missed the deadline no. yeah technically yes so we're coming back to the next question we have a comment from Anas you both are amazing thank you so much as always thank we you, have Anas. so many comments from you all the time and there's so uh, yeah Anas is like one of the most active participant of yeah, Talk. I appreciate it the it's active. really good of you that is true that is true Anas thank you very much that is a very nice thing to read so we're going to the next question from Simon again. Simon again, so, okay. you want to read it? Sure. Uh, did COVID situation somehow change the situation in terms of crypto uh, cryptocurrencies? Uh, I don't really think so. Uh, COVID definitely pushed the prices of stocks down because if the demand falls in an economy, um, the price, the confidence of people in the in the company which they are investing falls down as well so we saw that there was a mini crash in April in, in March where the prices just went down but uh, the big money the institutional traders didn't want it, the market market to collapse so they just put it there but as I mentioned the, the COVID crisis and cryptocurrency doesn't have uh, they are not they're mutually exclusive so uh, the prices are rising because the big banks are putting money in cryptocurrency so COVID situation and cryptocurrency I don't really think it's uh, related yeah okay thank you and we're moving to the next question 
Mm, I have a question on related topic. Are you familiarized with what's happening on Gaza now? Mm. And if yes, what's your opinion on it? Okay, so Palestine and uh, Israel. Israel's uh, we some of us might not know that but Israel has one of the strongest armies in the world like their missiles are designed as such that if you fire a rocket towards them it will just collapse it in the air and Palestine on the other hand uh, I don't really know all this situation which is going on because if I comment on either side I'm gonna get hate yeah please don't <laughs> yeah so what I think is like Palestine is a very weak party and I not don't mean it in like to offend somebody but if you uh, if you are a policeman and if there is a guy with a knife in front of you you don't shoot him and the exact thing is uh, Israel doing to Palestinians that they are way too powerful for them so I think they should take uh, uh, the Israel should take a step forward to de-escalate the situation and make peace with it that is just my personal opinion thank you for that we have the next question from Vivek uh, so investing in stock market through mobile application is it a proper way or is just fooling us um, uh, okay so you could invest from your mobile I used to invest from my mobile uh, but depends on if you're investing or you are trading if you're trading you have to be uh, in in a trading room you have to have a proper system proper softwares proper news feed systems all this kind of thing so you can invest from your phone not a problem but make sure you are investing not trading mm -hmm. yeah Okay, thank you. Uh, we have hi from Ismail, hi from Ismail. our buddy. <laughs> hi Ismail. And we have another question, I guess the most important question, the best question and okay. the price uh, will <laughs> go to this wonderful uh, man. Uh -huh. Karel Yena is asking, Dipanshu, what courses will you teach next semester? <laughs> Whatever you offer me, sir, I'm ready for it. But mostly it would be financial markets because, yeah, I love it. Well, we, you're going to discuss this thing with the wonderful assistant of Mr. Yena just after the exactly. Lazarski talk. So dear students of management faculty, please get prepared it's gonna be fun yes and uh, hello to you our wonderful boss <laughs> to you uh, we have the next question mm, did you ever had big loss in crypto tell me your experience from the beginning uh, well not the whole huge whole, story oh, for uh, exactly exactly <laughs> for so um, I would say I started investing in cryptocurrency in 2017 and uh, I put some money in IOTA uh, and I put the money and just forgot about it because it crashed and such. So it was not a huge loss. So not something significant, but I don't really trade cryptocurrency. I'm just watching the market for now. And when the right time comes up, I will see what I can do. Yeah. So, but like there, uh, I, I invested in the stock market and it was pretty volatile, especially in commodities. Uh, so there I had my fair share of losses. So I learned from it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I guess we can move to our questions for just a little bit. Yeah, and I prepared. think this is the perfect time to ask mm -hmm. uh, this question. Uh, do someone need to have a particular education for uh, doing this, what you are describing for half an hour already? Uh, and what is the set of skills required for that? And how did you start? Okay, so um, in my opinion, uh, there is... Um, even if you are like a high school student you can start doing it you just have to take a particular course I'm not recommending somebody but you know everything on about stock market and ev practically everything there is, is on YouTube and I was too inexperienced to know that how inexperienced I was when I started buying these courses about stock market like two years ago so when I came to Poland I was like okay I'm it's time to make some money you know so I started learning about it and uh, started buying courses obviously they helped they narrowed it down way easier for me um, so a particular skill set you have to be very emotionally strong because the market 80% uh, is psychology 20% is the technicals technicals will take you two or three months to learn but psychology when the prices are going up will you close it or will you hold it when you when you are in a deep loss what will you do so if you master psychology uh, I think you can be a successful investor I'm not saying trader because I just don't want to give out this advice that okay you can go and become a trader not the fact that you cannot be but there is only 1.2 percent of traders which become successful and they have extraordinary skills uh, even one one more thing that you don't have to be good in maths in order to be good in stock market but like you have to be very active presence for example if you're playing video games 
it could be helpful in high frequency trading but if you are going to a grocery store and you are taking 10 minutes to see if I should buy green apples or red ones then probably trading isn't for you because you have to make quick decisions so these are two important skills to have here okay okay I think we should get get back to the Instagram question because I think that it's important uh, to answer that so the question is can you tell us about yourself how did you choose Poland as your study destination why you choose Lazarski and uh, how is your experience till now and what's work you're doing in Poland right now I guess this is one of the candidates I assume um, for studying at Lazarski University first of all welcome to the family we're very happy to have you here and we had more or less the same question yeah. regarding your education so tell us a little bit in a nutshell in a nutshell I chose Lazarski University because of dual degree program plain and simple answer because I studied international business economics but earlier I was about to go to Siena University Italy I missed it because of a deadline of course. and and <laughs> 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 and uh, I, f I did my bachelor's in economics so I always uh, I, I, I'm studying economics from last seven years so I knew that I'm gonna do something about it so um, it's a very very short story that I was about to continue my education in back in India as well but because of some health problems uh, I couldn't so I decided that it's time to go it's time to leave this country for good for some time and my parents they really support it. they do support me in like everywhere and if you're watching uh, hi <laughs> hi to parents of Dipanchu yeah so um, in a nutshell I came here because of the course and I really appreciate that I took this university rather than um, the Warsaw School of Economics because it's not just about the studies it's not just about the education it's about what kind of people do you meet if I would be in other university then I wouldn't meet them and that would be a big loss <laughs> so that's how I ended up here and right now my work is uh, I'm a lecturer in this university and I teach project management yeah. And I have the question regarding this. So your education, how tell us how you got from educational path to the teaching one. So um, I primarily have two interests. One is trading because it sort of gives me an adrenaline rush and uh, I'm really interested in how this I'm just fascinated by how market works what are the psychology of people because it's all about supply and demand and second thing I'm interested in talking to people communicating like so I thought that path of teaching and explaining stuff to people I like to think that I'm pretty good at explaining stuff and uh, I just thought like how can I combine these two things communication skills and I, I'm good at explaining so boom I'm here and uh, I'm really glad that uh, she supported me a lot uh, in all the uh, all the areas about the paperwork and everything she was just like a standing stone there so some credit goes to her <laughs> and thank you so much and that's that's how I ended up becoming a lecturer here thank you for the perfect answer I'm <laughs> more than satisfied okay, with that. Okay. I'm really happy you're with us too uh, we have the question what was your best and worst trading experience I think we already best and worst trading experience yeah. best experience we made a lot of money worst experience I lost a lot of money. nice answer to the nice question uh, and another question from the Instagram that we have is would you read that yeah sure how to develop charisma and communication skills were you born as charismatic person of or you were working on yourself if yes tell how did you do this thank you for pointing that out uh, Wow <laughs> If you and had the long uh, hair, you would do this. <laughs> <laughs> so being charismatic is about... Whoa, I, I wasn't expecting this question. See? Mm, work on yourself, you know. Like when you go home, uh, instead of watching Netflix, maybe turn on one or two YouTube videos. How, that, how to be charismatic. <laughs> and uh, just work on yourself. Speak slow. Speak in a definite manner. And don't... Ah, yeah. One pro tip. Don't use... Uh, Mm, in the sentences you don't have to fill the silence it silence is okay sometimes it's good to be clear like if I say that um, mm, it, like we are not singing a song here you're trying to just say something so just small things in your life if you correct it it will make you I guess a little charismatic <laughs> that's what we say it. so yeah so were you doing this watching YouTube videos how no, to he be was charismatic watching <laughs> I was watching Netflix I didn't <laughs> I didn't need the videos <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, uh, would you read the comment from Anas? Because I think I'm gonna cry. 
Okay, uh, first of all, he is saying if you did not choose Lazarski, will not be able to have this meeting. That's that's true. And Lazarski is about people. Lazarski is about those who are sharing with us their knowledge. Reza Lazarski is love. Lazarski is truly love. And students and like you makes it even better. And here we have a promo video for the recruitment <laughs> exactly, campaign like, for right. this year. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Anas. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, coming back to the teaching stuff, because we have 20 minutes left and I really want to cover that a little yeah. bit. So, how does your, I don't want to ask you exactly how does your work relate to the education, but what is the thing that you want to share with the students? In education, one of the best things I like is uh, taking, down, taking a lot of information, condensing it down to some bullet points and conveying it to your students so that neither they waste their time nor do I that is my main focus in my presentations as well so uh, none of us would prefer online classes over offline classes but uh, if if we had a chance to present it online I just make my presentations in such a way that the information is correct what is necessary is written there and then I give the case study for a practical explanation of the stuff which I taught earlier so this this is the case this is how I move ahead with my classes Okay, but do you like it in general, the experience of being a teacher? I would appreciate to teach the classes offline any given day, but if uh, life has presented me with an opportunity of teaching online, I absolutely adore it. I adore my students. Some of them really did well, like I wasn't expecting such a good essay from some of them students. I gave them really good marks. Uh, one of the guy called Oshun, he made a project about cryptocurrency. There was a girl called Anne, she made a project about community water services, if I'm not uh, wrong. So these kind of students, the, uh, uh, one more thing I would like to, I think you also have this, there are four types of students. One who are really active participating second they are like they are happy to be there third <laughs> third are the students which sometimes you know they're they're visitors they're like okay there's class okay i'll just go and come and the fourth i don't know where they are <laughs> i just saw their name once and they're not so uh there are 16 active students in my classes uh, in my class and um, everybody is doing pretty good except one or two students which are pretty Fourth okay. type of student. What, what is the type of student that you've been um that I have been <laughs> that we have been we could yeah. say <laughs> we were uh, those kind of students which we never miss the deadlines when we work we work but on the other hand when we party we party when we do stuff we do stuff like life is uh, there is a very nice quote that I remember do whatever makes you happy because the days are not coming back and that's what we did we uh, literally took every moment from every class and enjoyed it whether take it studying whether take it anything and she made uh, our two years even better because of her concerts and uh, her singing she made our two years even better with her dancing there are a lot of beautiful girls everybody appreciates that was the first one to appreciate that of yeah. course. <laughs> exactly so that's the case thank you um uh, uh, mm, I actually. <laughs> You're a singer. You can yes, do that. I'm saying I'm singing a song. <laughs> okay. So yes, I actually want because we have 15 minutes left, but I really want to ask you one more thing. Mm, we actually have a question related to one of the events. This is very important from my perspective because we, uh, you were talking about this when you party, you party. When you study, you study. But uh, the question about Lazarsk University and why you've chosen that. So in the normal under the normal conditions right in circumstances when there is no pandemic we have a lot of events that are coming that are happening so we have a question for you my dear colleague would you read this one okay uh my favorite one out of the whole list uh you're one of the winners of warsaw business game which took part in the year 2019 was the most valuable thing about it you don't read this I'm okay, asking. No. <laughs> and uh, does this experience help you with a teaching for example project management class yes so Warsaw business game in itself was a very very beautifully constructed project by a very good friend of mine who takes a lot of other projects as well and I'm sure that you know him Aksen Samek uh, so he organized this game and uh, 
both of these ladies were managing it there and i mentioned it specifically if you remember that <laughs> on yes. this speech i should have mentioned about my teammates but instead i did that but i'm happy about it so um as this project goes there were very small parts about uh venue about people about uh stakeholders about the sponsors about the teams about the team members about like every everything there was very small uh moving parts in all this big machinery which had to be in the fit place in order to be uh in order for it to be a successful event so the most important thing which i learned from warsaw business games uh as a participant was teamwork and uh like presentation skills i actually learned it from my friend julian if you're watching shout out to you julian uh, yeah. julian actually is working at lazarski university yeah. and now too and i'm so proud of my classmates exactly honestly. like we we were three classmates and we all are teaching you so <laughs> it must have been a really good batch and uh, uh coming to the next part of it is uh guys in next year because the university is gonna open i highly recommend and i will repeat myself I highly recommend for you to apply for activities like this because these are the connecting dots to your success. Your success will not come that you will pass the degree and you will just boom out of sudden you are successful. These small steps would make you connect people, will develop your presentation skills, communication skills and then you will find yourself as a more refined person and uh, that will that is going to make you successful in the coming events. So please take part in Warsaw Business Games 2022. Let's hope, yeah. Mhm. Mm let's All hope. Right. Fingers crossed. I actually that. have one more question that we didn't prepare. Mm, what's up with the thesis that you wrote? Okay, on your so my thesis was again on the stock market although uh we didn't have this subject as interesting as it should be. Uh, but I made a thesis on to determining the most efficient technical indicator based on momentum trend and volatility and when you are trading there are certain types of indicators which you have to look at like SMA EMA Bollinger Bands and everything so my conclusion of the thesis were there are there is EMA and Bollinger Bands if you combine them that will give you the best results for investing in exchange traded funds so yeah that was my thesis of, about and uh, it's being published so if it comes out i will i will put it on my story do we need to <laughs> shout out to dr back yeah again, dr back yeah again, he we he love was you my, as always thank you he was you my much. supervisor and he made it possible yeah. yeah uh okay we have a comment from anas again. i don't remember the episode when we received so many compliments to the guests well the <laughs> that's your charisma <laughs> yes, uh, Anas is saying thank you for this fruitful meeting and all what you shared with us. Have a wonderful week. Uh, you too, dear Anas. students. We'll wish you that in the very end of the... Uh, yeah, I, I just want to finish mm -hmm. with this compliments. Uh, one student also is saying that uh, just too good, I think. You're too good for... Thank you for, so much. For <laughs> All of this. To be true, uh, just too good to be true, Dipanshu. And uh, another student is saying, "Proud of you, Dipanshu. Love from your brother. Okay. Hope you know." The whole family love is you watching love, you. Love you too, brother. <laughs> How to say "love you" in Indian? Uh, me, me, tumse. Just say it. Me, me tumse. Me, tumse. Pyar. Pyar. Karta. Karta. Hmm. You're kidding me right now. Just say who. That's it. <laughs> Are you sure? That I was am pretty much sure, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't believe you. I think you said something very... Just very say pyar hai. Pyar hai. Exactly. Okay. Oh, what a All nice right. comment. Proud of you, dear darling son, Dipanshu. So uh, the whole family I mean, is watching. Yeah, yeah. I just want to say that I love your family and I'm really thankful for it, for this wonderful son. <laughs> thank you, I thank am you. Ju I just want to say that. Uh, and we actually have a very smart question and I think very useful. Uh, would you read that? It's okay. not a question, it's just a request. Uh, name three to five books every young people should, young individual should read to be successful in their life. Doesn't mean financial part only. Okay, okay. Um, I would name Atomic Habits. That is a very good book. That how small increments in your life can make your life better by the end of the year by 365%. But if you may become worse by 1%, um, you know, you could end up on the zero base level. So Atomic Habits would be my number one book. Uh, second would be as fiction because it will change your philosophy of the mind. It would be The Alchemist. Third would be Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari. Uh, fourth would be 12... Uh, what was it? By Jordan Peterson, 12 Rules of Life. And the fifth book would be, let's say, that is about investing. 
uh, it is the tools and techniques for becoming a master day trader yeah these are my personal five favorite books thank you for it for the list by the way we have hi from uzbekistan to you Dipancho. hi international people we have okay. here um so i have i want my dear mm, darina to mm -hmm. ask you to ask him the last question and before that i just want to say guys that we have a video for you it's from dr Beck, honestly not from us it's about the cryptocurrency and stuff and it's very informative and funny so i'm just going to send you the link uh to that and today in the evening you Dipancho, you'll post on the insta story the three books okay uh I so will. people can just uh get it okay. and now we have the last question what are your hobbies i'll be short what are my hobbies i like to work out and i like to eat good food <laughs> and uh, i like to read a lot um my best hobby is while i'm doing my dishes or something i just put on my headphones and i turn on the ted talk so if i watch one ted talk per day by the end of the month i have 30 ted talks and the ability to comprehend how to use them in the daily life so these are one of my hobbies uh in the night when i sleep after mm, doing my work and everything i watch videos about space because i'm really interested in uh, how the cosmos was created like sometimes I have this existential crisis which makes me question reality So just trying to find out what is the meaning? Why are we here? So these this is these are my recent hobbies, but they they keep on changing and I love uh, painting art yeah. Yes, that's true. He's yeah. very good at it. Thank you. Uh, we have a comment love from India, of course and we have two more questions and we have nine minutes. So the first question very fast uh, what top three stocks or crypto you have in your portfolio? Uh, as for now, I don't really hold any uh, cryptocurrencies with me, but I'm just watching over the market. But I would uh, recommend, first of all, Bitcoin is way too expensive. So uh, Ethereum, um, Cardano and uh, XRP. These are the three uh, cryptocurrencies which you can keep an eye on. They are comparatively cheap, so it's going to be good. But Bitcoin is the king, but... Okay. You see, if you okay. have a lot of cash. And we have the last question, but I think we should ask this. Uh, but depends, you need to be short. Okay. Okay. Uh, can I just narrow it down and miss this detailed experience in Lazarsky University? And the question is, would you recommend Indian students to come to Lazarsky? I definitely would recommend Indian students, but I would also give you an advice that if you are coming to a foreign country for the sake of it, just to enjoy the experience, it doesn't matter you come to Lazarsky or you go to France or you go to US, don't come with the mentality of just having, just going through life. Come with a hunter mentality just to achieve it all, to study, to grow better, because if you if you come from a foreign country to this country, Obviously, my personal favorite choice, and I appreciate it every day that I am in this university rather than any others, could be better, could be worse, but come with the mental attitude that you want to achieve something. That would be the best thing to do. As, as, and as a fellow Indian guy, um, I think you guys are smart, so it's going to work out. <laughs> that silence in the very beginning just scared me a little yes. bit. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but that was a wonderful answer. Really gonna answer. say no because we're gonna get out of the studio immediately. <laughs> yeah. So, should we come to your favorite part with uh, the? Yes, absolutely. So, do you know who oh asked you the or do you remember the best question? Don't tell Let's start Carolina, from this. Please. <laughs> <laughs> um, there were so many good questions. Wow. But but I would choose which which I found the most appealing and funny. This guy who was saying that why do you work out? Yeah, who is he? Okay, and the name of this guy is or girl? No dot t seventy four. I guess. Where was? <laughs> yes. That? Yes. Here. So. N O dot T seventy four. You just won the package from the marketing department of Lazarski University. Congratulations on that. Congrats. We'll contact you um, in Instagram, exactly. and we'll decide how you get this. All right. So we had one more. Question yeah, we actually there. have one more question. We can <laughs> answer that. But I just thought that. Oh, we have a comment from. I guess that's your mom, and yes. she says that she loves you. <laughs> 
I love you too, mom. Oh, even though I love your mama. <laughs> oh, see, my, my family is watching. I really, I'm really happy. Half of the India is watching this Lazarski yeah. talks. I know, Devanshu, you're our influencer. <laughs> okay. So we have the last question. Would you read that? What do we do when crypto starts crashing? Crying. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you can cry <laughs> and uh, when crypto starts crashing thing see the thing is to be proactive rather than reactive so you should know when the crypto are showing the signs of crashing again if it will help if you do your research but it would be very good advice to be out before the crypto crashes and there is a pro tip from my side that crypto goes in a cycle so be careful around the area of september to july to september because they're gonna be a downfall until a major news comes in cryptos can al also fall down yeah keep keep an eye on elon musk this guy is handling bitcoin these days pretty well so if they crash just get out cut your losses immediately because the winners, the people who make money and don't make money are the two people that who cut their losses fast and let the profit winners run. It was a very hard lesson for me. But yeah, don't lose your money. Okay. Thank you for the answer. So. We have come to an end. Yes. Unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately. Sadly. Right. <laughs> but. You know, actually, our winner of the contest is saying, or he's saying, we still are guessing. Uh, well, thank you so much. I didn't expect that yeah you know unexpected things are best so, yes but it was a creative question so. so i guess that's the perfect moment to say thank you very much dipanchu thank it you was so informative it was really fruitful i didn't expect that honestly but i'm <laughs> so satisfied thank you that okay. was actually some kind of a lecture yeah. i would say rather than an interview <laughs> thank you so much for this uh, I'm pretty sure you guys will see Dipanshu here uh, on some of the chairs because yeah. sometimes he's hosting the events uh, but so it yeah. still was, was very worth it to invite you as a guest absolutely, absolutely. So, absolutely. did you like it Dipanshu? I yes. absolutely adored it like uh, I'm just feeling like you know we friends are having a meeting here and there's a lot of audience that are sitting and uh, even I didn't thought that it would be like so much technical stuff would be going on I thought we would discuss more about like friendly things but I'm really happy that if I uh, gave you some perspective on cryptocurrencies but again my biggest advice is uh, be really careful about uh, with your money and um, be smart that's it thank you so much uh, Anastasia Darina I'm really happy to be here. So, uh, we need to read that uh, comment from Dipanchu's mom because moms are the most important people in our lives. Okay. So, please. You are a real angel, angel, angel of our family. Dipanchu, you are an angel <laughs> of your family. <laughs> you know, this is typical mom stuff. You, know, you, like, <laughs> you should appreciate <laughs> this. I, 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 I do appreciate it. Because you it. really are for mom. <laughs> Thank I'm you, sure. Dipanchu, your friend Bobur from Uzbekistan. Thank you, Babu, from Uzbekistan. Anyways, the best viewer of today is your mom. Anyways, mm -hmm. I'm yeah. sorry, Ismail, I'm sorry, Bobur, <laughs> I'm sorry, Karolina. But thank you very much, everybody from India who watched us today. Thank you very much for being with us. And thank you very much for such a wonderful guest that we had today. So we think it's a perfect moment to say goodbye. We see you very soon. Thank you very much for being with us. And have a nice and perfect end amazing week.